The month of Rajab is a sacred month from the sacred months of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it held an immense position. Most notably, perhaps, because of the most incredible incident that happened in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is the night journey from Mecca to Masjid al-Aqsa and then from Masjid al-Aqsa to the highest heaven where he had his encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is known as Laylat al-Isra wal-Mi'raj and in this short video I want to kind of just talk a bit about the context about how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa got to that particular maqam, that particular station and some lessons inshallah along the way we know in the Meccan period that the Prophet sallallahu had gone from pillar to post trying to get some kind of support and some kind of audience and some kind of semblance of acceptance from the people of Mecca about the message of Islam. But the rejection came and the pain was really, really intense for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in so many instances and really captured the state of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we know full well that your chest is really constrained by what they're saying. It's as if you would destroy yourself because of their rejection of this message. The Prophet ﷺ was being rejected from his own people his own clansmen and so in an effort to try to find some relief some support he was taken and was advised to go to Bani Thaqif which is the place of Ta'if and without going into the detail of the seerah the people of uh, Ta'if the leaders of Ta'if they allowed the Prophet to speak but they already had a plan in mind and so the Prophet ﷺ was rejected and not just rejected by saying we're not happy with your message and off you go but rather he was humiliated. People on the streets, the lowly people, were throwing stones at him, throwing pelting rotten food, the worst things you can imagine, to the extent that the Prophet Sallallahu feet and he started to bleed and his sandals were getting stuck to his feet because of the blood. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As he left that city, as he found his way to an orchard where he had a chance to catch his breath and just to recount the incident that he's just been through and recount the instances prior to this of how much little support he was getting knowing that he was not accepted at home had nowhere to go in terms of support from his own people seeking the assistance from others and that was being thrown back in his face he sat there at that moment reflecting on his situation and he made the most profound dua the most profound statement in a beautiful, beautiful uh, lesson for every single one of us about how we complain about our situation and how we can and should continue to complain only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made that famous dua. Allahumma ilayka ashku ba'afa quwwati. Ya Allah, to you alone I complain the weakness of my state. Wa qillata hilati And the lack of strategy that I have and how easy it is that people can just mess me about he goes on Ya Allah who else am I supposed to rely on some enemy that doesn't even like me despite that situation the Prophet ﷺ turns to Allah and says Illam yakun bika ghadabun fala ubali. despite all this Ya Allah all these difficulties that I'm facing if you Ya Allah are not angry with me then Alhamdulillah fala ubali. But, Ya Allah, I prefer, yeah, like the human he is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'd rather your pardon and your safety. And he sought the, the, the uh, refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's light and relief from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And in this beautiful dua, in that beautiful moment where he showed and was in his most broken state, truly showing inkisar, and the scholars they say when you want to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show him how broken you are that you only can be fixed by him show him how needy you are where your only need can be fixed by him 
And this is beautifully epitomized in the statement of the Prophet ﷺ in this incredible dua. And that is when we hear the, the, the incident where the, the, the angels came saying, Ya Rasulullah, we have been given, uh, we, are the, the, uh, we are responsible for the mountains. If you want, we can knock these mountains over Bani Thaqif, the people of Ta'if. And the Prophet ﷺ made his famous response. He says, no, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring from the offspring those who say La ilaha illallah. And such was the Prophet ﷺ, rahmatun alameen, truly a mercy to mankind. But he returns to Mecca in those moments where he has no support from family, no support from his tribe, no uh, wonderful wife in Khadija, radiallahu anha, who is now passed already. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is there by himself, having been rejected by everyone and everything on earth, it seems. And then Jibreel alayhi salam comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in that miraculous night. And there the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam explains in that famous incident where Jibreel brought before him this incredible beast, Al-Buraq. And as he rode, he was taken with each stride was to the horizon. And before he knew it, he was in Masjid Al-Aqsa. And what is Masjid Al-Aqsa, brothers and sisters? This blessed land that was blessed by Allah. You see, Mecca was blessed by due to Ibrahim alayhi salam and the building of the Kaaba. Medina has its maqam and status because of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Masjid al-Aqsa has its maqam and status because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed it. Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who in this particular surah Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took his servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca, Masjid al-Haram, to Masjid al-Aqsa, around which we have blessed. This land that has been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate Masjid al-Aqsa from the Zionist occupation. I mean, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that instance, when the world seemed against him, was now being taken through this journey that was going to show him that even though the world doesn't know you yet, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The heavens know you. And more importantly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you. And Jibreel takes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Masjid al-Aqsa, where he leads the Anbiya, all the Prophets in Salah, subhanallah, every single one of them, recognizing that Muhammad Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Imam al-Anbiya wal mursaleen the leader, the Imam of all Prophets and Messengers. And then, from Dome of the Rock, or from the Rock rather, or from that station, he is taken to the heavens, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar, what a journey. You know, I went to Masjid Al-Aqsa in 2016, or 2016, yes, 2016. And there, the Imam, when we were sat at the compound, he would say, you are now at the gateway of heaven. And truly it is. This is where the Prophet Sallallahu ascended to heaven. So, from that gateway to heaven, subhanAllah, he was taken up to heavens. And the experiences that he had with all these Prophets is not the moment to talk about it now. But really, it's about to talk about the, the, the lesson primarily and the, the incredible gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which was, as we know, the obligation of salah. And this is beautiful in so many different ways. But perhaps the most is that when it comes to every single other obligation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down the news from the heavens to the Prophet sallallahu while he was on earth. Yet the command for salah, the obligations of the five daily prayers, came about by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing and elevating the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from earth to the heavens. And in this is multiple, multiple lessons that the salah, my brothers and sisters, is a salah, is a connection. That your salah is a chance for each one of us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all those five moments in the day that it is a connection that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is something that we clearly neglect a lot of the times. We do our salah because it's a burden or it's something to get out of the way. We're watching something and we just need to pray before that thing finishes, a football match or whatever it is. Not recognizing that the one you're in connection with during that salah is the one who controls the matters of the dunya that you're trying to rush your salah for. Subhanallah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was given this maqam and this station and was given this beautiful journey it was for us my brothers and sisters to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
really holds the concept of Salah to such a degree and to such a maqam and a status that he brought his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the way to heavens in order uh, to the highest heaven in order to gain this particular injunction and to gain this particular command to pray the five daily prayers and so while we reflect on this incredible journey and we need to listen to more scholars and more hadith and more detail about this particular journey because it is absolutely fascinating the conversation has with the prophets the the the, the stations of each uh, prophets all these intricacies of this incredible journey and all the conversations he has absolutely fascinating the ultimate conclusion when it comes to masjid or, or, or um, recognizing the importance of Laylatul Isra al Mi'raj is to recognize that the only way to truly celebrate this moment is by establishing the prayer. The whole, the pinnacle, the bow, the peak of this experience was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet sallallahu a means to attain the connection with him subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of us after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi through our salah. So, if you want to honor Isra al Mi'raj, honor your salah. Jazakumullah khair. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places benefit in this. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.